So I may uh, ask uh, maybe uh, a question formulated in another way. How to make message of liberty attractive enough to save young people from the clutches of the old right? Because I think libertarians have to some extent failed to do that. And I'm referring to the so-called libertarian alt-right pipeline, uh, which I don't know if it really exists, but... Uh, Are you an American? Do I sound like an American? Not so much. <laughs> I guess so. But how do you know all this? Well, I, I, I spend a lot of time on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, But also, also in Poland, uh, we have uh, this kind of uh, free market to uh, far right wing uh, pipeline. So, I'd like you to address this. Well, let, me, let me just say, I think that this is a, it's a catastrophe. What has happened to libertarians in, in light of the alt right? It is, it is absolutely cat catastrophic and, and extremely dangerous to liberal ideology that uh, that, that this pipeline exists and. We must be, we must exercise courage in the face of the alt-right and call it out for what it is. Uh, liber libertarianism has no interest at all in racialist ideology and nationalist ideology or any form of collectivism whatsoever. It is contrary to everything we believe, contrary to human rights, and contrary to everything we've worked over 500 years to achieve. So uh, these people, who have stolen so many of our people um, are our enemies. And um, I am very sad that so many libertarians were ill-prepared to deal with the danger on the right. Ill-prepared, uh, because they had such poor educations and they, they come to believe that anything that's non-leftist must necessarily be a great thing. You know? Very, very dangerous. Uh, this is why I highly recommend Omnipotent Government by, by Mises. I'm so glad you came out with this book right now. And I don't know what's going on in Poland, but this has been catastrophic in the U.S. And let me uh, put maybe one last statement about this, because um, obviously this is the subject of my new book, right? Um, where I trace back right-wing collectivism to 1820, to, to Hegel, through Carla, through, through uh, Ruskin, uh, all the way to Schmidt in, uh, in Germany, and through the works of... Uh, through the works of Friedrich List and, and uh, who's this, this tedious German like, guy who wrote The Decline of the West? Spangler. Spangler. Um, so, um, just as a trivial point, you know who's been a marvelous friend to liberalism in the US? Um, a guy by the name of Jordan Peterson. So it's very interesting because he stood up to the uh, PC uh, police in, in Canada and said, you will not control my pronouns, right? And the alt-right said, oh, this is a great man. You must follow this guy. And then gradually over time, it turns out that he is not alt-right. He is a liberal in a broad sense, right? A liberal like um, maybe uh, like Lord Acton or something like this. So we're like... I would include Edmund Burke in the category of uh, liberalism, too. And so he has been a fantastic way to stop this catastrophic leakage out of uh, libertarianism into the alt-right. And I think he's had an immensely good influence on, uh, and I'm very grateful to him. I mean, he achieved what I was unable to achieve, you know? And uh, his 12, 12 Rules is, a, I think, a fabulous book. And, um, yeah, so I, I highly recommend, uh, I think Jordan Princeton has been very useful in, in helping stop this problem. Uh, one final statement on this. We need every single libertarian intellectual to be very clear about his allegiances with regard to this great question. And he who is not clear about this may be part of the problem. So I say that in partial answer to what you asked me. Także słyszeliście, czytajcie Petersona, tak jasno się wyraził. Potem na after party, którego zdjęcia już widzieliście, rozmawiałem z Takerem przez dwie godziny na ten temat. Nie mogę przytoczyć wszystkiego, ale do tej pory pamiętam to, co mi powiedział o Hansie Hermanie Hoppe. Hans was never a liberal.